Okay, now we're moving on. I'm sorry, we just have so much to say. Um, our next presenter is uh, Lieutenant Drew Vasquez. But before I bring him forward, I have Stephanie Torini, I think. Stephanie, if you would say a few words about Lieutenant Vasquez while I try and set up quickly his, his PowerPoint. Thank you. Um, yeah, Lieutenant Vasquez, just a, a little bit, he's been on the Sheriff's Department for 25 plus years. 28, 28 years. <laughs> so, I knew it's been a while. And I've had the pleasure of working with him before when I worked um, with the Sheriff's Department as a deputy. He currently works with my husband now. And uh, if some of you guys have had him come to our block, our neighborhood watch meetings, and he's helped me out in some of our meetings, giving you guys some good information and some good tips. Um, when he's working, he's actually working right now, um, and he actually is in charge of the whole county at the night shift, so he has um, um, graciously given his time tonight to come here and do a presentation for you guys on identity theft, and so I'd like to welcome. Thank you so much for coming, and give us your knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting it up for you. Thank you, Stephanie. And thank you, Laura, for inviting me tonight. I've got to tell you that Justin's food is really good tonight. Portobello mushrooms, really good. So you're probably wondering about the uh, recent trends of crime within your neighborhood. So we're going to answer some of those questions, too. really want you to be active and interactive with me so I can maybe help you out with some problems in your, in your area. So... Um, that gentleman the other night that was um, search and rescue participated in, I don't know that much about it, but I do know he was found at the fairgrounds. Um, he had actually walked from here all the way to the fairgrounds, which is, I don't know how long that is, but uh, he, he, I think he walked out of his shoes too, right? Because I think he had one shoe on, so. But uh, I think overall his health was okay, so. Um, good ending to that story. I don't know how many man hours were put into that, but I think he was gone for quite some time. So thank you, Search and Rescue. Um, did anybody hear about the arsonist from a couple? I know Dave did because uh, our, is it Dave? Kevin, Kevin Davis, okay. Um, about a month ago, we responded to a fire uh, behind the Sorensen area, uh, right across from Cupertino High School. And there's a Lutheran church back there, Crafts, Sorensen area. Along the creek bed, there was a fire, so fire department responds. We respond. Uh, we, we figured it was some homeless guy down there in, with an encampment that uh, maybe the fire got out of control. And once that fire was put out, another fire popped up, not even probably 100 yards from us at the, um, at the preschool across from Cupertino High School. And it was a structure fire, so this person actually set... Um, fire to a structure, the trees caught on fire. I don't know how much damage was done, but there was uh, liquor bottles left there. So at this point, um, I was working, so I called for the helicopter to come up. We do have a helicopter, I'm sure you've heard it. So while a helicopter was en route, another fire broke out at Cupertino High School. So somebody had set uh, fire to the dumpsters and, and the trash cans, and so we set up our perimeter. I mean. I called everybody from headquarters patrol, which is central, east side, even the South County units were coming up to try to set up a perimeter because we figured it's pretty active and, and maybe this person is contained within our perimeter. Uh, we spent hours and hours and hours searching for the person. We never found it. The only way we found out was because this wasn't the smartest crook, as a lot of you may know crooks aren't real smart, but he's a 17-year-old kid and he bragged about it to his girlfriend. He was a student. At Cupertino High School, I believe, and uh, he was apprehended and charged. So that was a good ending to that. Um, thank God he was <laughs> volunteering the information. We did have evidence at the scene. We're probably going to get fingerprints off it anyway and be able to identify him, but the uh, fire department worked really hard, and so did our guys out there. Uh, another good story, um, I think it was about a month ago. Our midnight guys were out here working, and, and uh, that seems to be when the, when the thieves come out at night. So uh, a car drives by with, a, I think it was five people in the vehicle, and it was over in the Homestead Foothill Expressway area and didn't have a front plate. Our, our guy was driving an SUV, so he made a U-turn and tried to 
go after the person he took off into the Arboretum area, which is actually Los Altos, and lost sight of him. A few minutes later, the car drives back down, a little pursuit ensues. Um, they stop the person over in Los Altos. Everybody gets out, there's guns dropped, there's people fleeing into the neighborhood. So our guys, once again, set up a great perimeter. They don't chase anybody because we wanna make sure our perimeter is all set up. We called, I believe we called Santa Clara or Sunnyvale uh, canines and Los Altos PD to help us do a search and everybody was caught, all five were caught. And uh, we put the word out to San Jose PD and they had, had an actual drive-by shooting over on the east side. So what they were doing over here, I think they, they made a statement that they were lost. They kind of got lost over here. Um, I think it was a stolen vehicle, so another good ending to a, to a story there. So I guess Stephanie Torini puts out the information about what's happening in your neighborhood. The site's been down, or they're going to move it to another site, to Facebook or something, so you probably haven't been updated on a lot of stuff. But that's what's going on in your neighborhoods. So not a whole lot of violent crime, although those incidents seem violent, right? <laughs> your neighborhood is pretty much safe. The... Uh, the main issues are traffic. We still have a lot of vehicle collisions, and uh, we are writing a lot of citations, and we're hitting the schools and trying to do active enforcement to deter some of the uh, law violators out there. As far as criminal activity, vehicle burglaries, residential burglaries. We still have that happening quite a bit. And <clears throat> although we're gonna really do some target enforcement, I think we're gonna see that kind of go up in the next couple of months because everybody's gonna be shopping over at Valco. When you go shopping, people buy a lot of stuff. They don't want to carry it around, so what do they do? They put it in their cars. Thieves are out there just waiting for you to put your stuff in your car. Then they break your windows, open your doors, and steal all your gifts. So be cognizant of that, please, so we don't have to take too much paper, and <laughs> maybe we'll catch them. So, Your question? Yes. If the, if the helicopter's up, it's usually because um, they're going to assist. Maybe it's a prowler, and if they're up, they're going to come over here because we want to catch the prowler. If there's a, uh, an alarm, a residential burglary alarm goes off, they're going to come over if they're not busy on the east side or, or helping San Jose or another agency out. So you may hear it. It may be a big nothing because a lot of times they're just here for a little while, and then they, then they take off. But we did have another missing, I think he had Alzheimer's, probably a couple of months ago, and we utilized the helicopter to uh, go up into the hills and, and search for heat sources up in the hills. And that story ended good, too. So he came back. Yes, sir. Uh, sir. I was going to comment that last, last week or two weeks ago, the helicopters were PG&E doing uh, transmission line work. Oh, okay. That may be, that may be it, then. So, anyways, we'll go uh, on to identity theft. That seems to be where the uh, crime trends are happening across the United States. It's a billion dollar uh, industry for all the crooks out there. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll discuss on how to deter it, how to detect it, and defend against it. So I will be fast because you probably have questions. I may have answers, I may not. Okay, so identity theft occurs when somebody, a thief out there, obtains either your date of birth, your name, your driver's license information, your social security number, or medical card number, and they take that information and use it to obtain either goods, money, or, uh, or goods or money, or services like uh, to set up maybe an internet system, uh, direct TV services, and that kind of thing. So. Uh, they will gather that information and use it in your name, and it really causes you a problem. It's, uh, it's time. It costs you a lot of time to correct your good name because you've got to make a lot of contacts with all the credit bureaus to clear your good name. You've got to make a police report. All this stuff takes time, and it also can cost you money because if these identity thieves um, open up a bank account or a charge account in your name, they go out there and they charge up thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in your name. So by the time you discover the issue, your credit card companies will probably cover you 
But if it's your personal bank account, they may not cover you or you may not get any of your money back. So just be aware of that. How does identity theft happen? We get a lot of calls for people dumpster diving. And the majority of calls are people going into your recycle bins and taking your recyclables. But they do go, uh, thieves will go through your garbage and obtain your bank statements. They'll obtain your old credit card statements. Some people may accidentally throw uh, personal identifying information like a social security uh, card out in the, in the garbage. They will go ahead and do trash rips, go through your garbage and, and assume your identity. So make sure that you, uh, you, sh you invest in a shredder. Shredders are cheap, I think they're only a few bucks. Shred all your critical documents and, and dispose of them that way. Talked about vehicle thefts or vehicle break-ins. For whatever reason, a lot of people think, I mean, it's a safe neighborhood, but uh, you gotta lock your car doors and please, please, please don't leave your purses in your car unattended. It seems to be the, the going trend around here. Everybody thinks they live in this uh, really secure neighborhood. Well, these crooks are out here riding their bikes at night and they'll smash your windows, grab your purse, and now they've got all your information. Okay. It also presents a problem like if you, if you park your car outside and you have a garage door opener there, they grab your garage door opener, you don't realize it, they can come back when you're at work, go ahead and enter your residence and steal more information or you know, your valuables inside. So please lock up your cars. Mail theft, mail theft is huge. Um, I don't know what types of mailboxes you have here. I know in my neighborhood we have the big old um, metal boxes and everybody's assigned a slot, so it's pretty secure. But um, if you're gonna mail things out, you know, it's probably best to drive by the post office and drop them in the box that way. If the mail comes, grab your mail as soon as you can because a lot of credit card applications with all your information are on there. These thieves will steal your mail and they have at it. Next thing you know, you're getting bills that you never even heard of, okay? And you're getting, being charged for thousands of dollars of product that you never purchased. So make sure you protect your mail. Uh, so wait, uh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. I just have a standard mailbox out in the front, outside my door. Should we get locking mailboxes? Should you? I, I think you need to contact the Postal Service on um, what you can do with your mailbox. Stephanie, didn't we have this come up last time at a neighborhood watch meeting where people were asking, can I move my mailbox? And so you have to contact the, mail, the post office and see if you can put a locking uh, mailbox at your house. They'll we, be able to help you out. need permission, you're, you're saying? I think you need permission from the post office. That's what I'm being told. I, I think I think we. Let's, let's hold on one second, ma'am, and we'll get you a microphone. Everything needs to be a mic. I'll be quick. Yeah, uh, myself, I did. And uh, you guys came and helped us because the uh, Citibank wasn't going to believe my story. And lucky that the cop came and he took all the statement. And this person uh, shot, man, everything that trashed my life. Yeah. And luckily, uh, I was able to clean it up. And right now, they are smack into your credit card right now. So check, Chase Bank right now have problem. And I got another 400 bucks, 450 right now. At the time that they got 18 grand, uh, they will bought uh, jewelry for $7,000. And then have a phone sack for 1,000 and 1,000. I thought it was my husband. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I asked him a very nasty question. Did you have a fair? <laughs> I saved your money and, you know. Yeah, I, I'm taking the mic away from you. <laughs> Thank you. I, w I wonder if we responded to our house on, on, on a domestic issue. <laughs> In our neighborhood, we used to have a newsletter that was distributed, and you would run into trouble with the post office department if you did that. So most of our houses have slots that we built in so that when the mail is delivered, it goes right into your house or right into your garage, and that takes care of everything. That's the best way to do it, absolutely. Or get a P.O. box. I'd just like to make people aware of something that just happened recently. Oftentimes the, the sheriff's department or other people tell us if we're going to be out of town to uh, have the mail held. Okay, don't, don't, don't have the post office deliver the mail. So we were recently on vacation and we put forward a uh, mail hold. And the way that they reminded themselves that they were holding the mail was they put a big rubber band around our mailbox to keep it closed. So it became very obvious that no mail was supposed to be delivered. I kind of think that defeats the purpose. <laughs> Anyways, it sort of advertised we weren't there. Just so you know what the mail department is doing, or post office department is doing, after we have such a good idea that we should hold our mail. She brings up a great point on credit cards. There's a, has anybody heard of skimming? It's these little devices that, you know, they're either at restaurants, grocery stores, they're even in gas stations inside the um, little boxes there when you use it. Huge, huge type of, uh, type of theft coming from that. And they, uh, they get your information off the back of that credit card. They go out to 7-Eleven, buy these uh, blank credit cards, and they encrypt them with all your information with their name and and on the front, so when they go to use your credit card, they've got their ID, their name on there, but all your information is on the back, so they just go and charge, charge, charge. Yes. I just want to share my experience with that. Wait, Lola, wait, wait, Lola, wait. Wait, wait. I got both mics, this is hard. Okay, I'll go the side of the room. So I just wanted to share my experience um, with skimming AMC um, at Valco. You know, they have a little booth where you can, outside where you can buy gift certificates. My card, somebody read, read information off of it. The thing to it is I used it and it wouldn't work. I tried it a couple times, it wouldn't work. And so I went to the ticket counter to buy my thing. But in that process somewhere, <clears throat> they picked up my credit card information. So it happens at Welcome. <laughs> In my experience, I would uh, I would advise use your credit card because it's insured. Your uh, your ATM, your debit cards. You know it's a little bit harder to uh, retrieve your funds. So if you're going to do it, use a credit card. It's still going to be a mess, and it's going to take you months and months to to clear your name up. But um, you know. I, there's not much you can do to prevent it. If, the, if there's a will, there's a way out there. You know, it's kind of a shame that these, these people are actually really smart. You know, they should be doing, investing their time otherwise. But uh, anyways, another subject. Um, forgot where I was. So, so if you're going to use passwords, don't use anything like your name or your date of birth. Or, you know, use the nickname of your dog or something you call your wife when you're mad at it or, so, uh, or something. <laughs> or mad at your husband. Um, <laughs> whatever names you want to use and, and make up a password that way. And don't leave your password in your iPhones. Don't leave your, pass uh, your, your passwords in your, as a reminder in your wallet. Don't carry your social security card in your wallet because if you lose your wallet, they've got your information. Unless you run into a good Samaritan that actually turns it in. Which does happen from time to time. So be alert, check your mail and your bills and see if anything's been added, a charge that you don't recognize. Um, and call the creditors and find out where this charge came from. 
I just did that down in San Diego. I went down to the police Olympics. I didn't remember a charge I had made. I may have been, may have been drinking a little bit that night, but I, but I didn't remember the charge and it came through and I had to call down there and they sent me a copy of the receipt and I was having sushi and sake bombs. So I was having a good time. I, I just didn't remember it. I thought somebody had ripped me off. So, so just make sure you go over your bills. Okay, so place a fraud alert on your credit reports by calling any one of these numbers here. I don't know if you want to write them down or not, but if you don't, there are flyers out there. There's these little yellow identity theft flyers. They're awesome. Look at them. It shows you how to complete a police report, how to report the crime, how to prevent it, but I recommend that everybody grab one of these because, you know what, probably half the room will be a victim at one time or another. So, yes. We're going to put this whole PowerPoint online. Okay. So you guys are going to have all this Perfect. information accessible to it for the Block Me website. Okay. Any questions? Anybody want to know what's going on out there right now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Did you have a question, ma'am? No? Um, I have one question, and that's back to the helicopters, because there have been a lot of them. And um, I get asked all the time, what was the helicopter going up there you know, last night? What was it doing there? And I was just wondering, is there a way at the time when it's going on, if they're there for 15 or 20 minutes, a website or something that we can look at and see you know, that they're out there at Apple or something, or they're doing whatever, that just so I people know. know. Is that something we should do, Stephanie? If, if, the helicopter, if the helicopter is up there for a length of time, it's, it's something active. But like the gentleman said over here, it may, be, may have been PG&E flying around. Our helicopter flies Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and they fly throughout the whole county. They even leave the county to support other agencies if they're needed. So, um, you know, it's a great asset for us. I mean, if we got a hot prowl, uh, they have the FLIR up there where they can pick up heat sources. If we have a missing adult at risk or a missing child at risk, we're going to use that helicopter, and, you know, sometimes it takes a long time to locate these people, so. And that's one of the things that we're um, working with the Sheriff's Department with the Next Door program, because with the Next Door program, they can go wherever they're working. If something's coming up, they can go right on it and notify a neighborhood by that neighborhood and let them know that there's a helicopter and this is what we're looking for. If it's uh, a missing, so I'm sorry, Stephanie. No. If it's a missing person at risk, whether it's an adult or a, or a child, you'll hear an announcement come over the PA system. We're looking for so-and-so. He's got dementia. He's wearing a T-shirt tonight, no shoes, brown pants, or whatever the description is of him. They'll put that out, and they'll announce it several times for probably an hour or two. And then they'll kind of spread out to another neighborhood because, believe it or not, even though these people don't move very well, they seem to get pretty far fast. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, this is a, a very small point, but I'm a block leader, and one of my people came up to me and wanted me to bring this up to the police. <laughs> Next door, we have a library, a wonderful library, and there's four parking spots there, say, I think it says four-minute parking only to drop off books. And every time he comes by, he can't get a parking spot there to drop off his books because there's somebody parked there, and the car's empty, and he, he can't get in there and park. And he wonders if the police ever police that area and give tickets. If you call us, <laughs> we could sit there for four minutes uh, and, and write a ticket, I guess. Or we do have CSOs. We still have CSOs, right? And they, code enforcement writes tickets. So code enforcement want to talk to you? Mm -hmm. Yes. What is the status of calling 911 from cell phones in the county now? I know at one point we were advised not to use 911 from a cell phone because it takes no. doesn't go through county comm. Can you Well, it bounces off this? a tower. It used to like if you were in uh, it used to be routed through the CHP, I think, up to Alameda somewhere and then it would come to us. There's a big huge time delay, but I think they've they've got it down to certain towers in this area. So, by all means if there's an emergency, call 911. Right, last I was told by County Com is that 90% of the calls are going straight to the sheriff's office. 
Um, there's still that 10% that might go to Vallejo or wherever else. So that's why when I do the neighborhood watch meetings, I tell you to program the 299 number in your phones because that will get you right to the dispatch. And if out, outside is the uh, flyer for neighborhood watch, the number's on there. So um, if you're on a landline and you go 911, it's going to go right to county dispatch. But on your phones, again, it's still that 10% chance it might not. So. It's a 408. 299-2311. There's two different numbers, but that's one of them. Okay, it's here and here. There you go. Lieutenant, I want to take this opportunity to thank you. We are so safe because you guys are looking over for us. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. So um, uh, my question is like um, nowadays I see like almost like frequently um, people coming over with a binder saying you need some roof repair, you need this repair. So what about those people? I, I hear a lot from my neighbors. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be contacting the city of Cupertino and get mm -hmm. a, a solicitor's permit and they're supposed to wear it around their neck I believe. But they don't have anything, they just if, come in. If like they that. don't, you call us. Because we do cite those people, and a lot of those people are the scammers out there because they're casing your home. You don't even know it, but they're casing your home sometimes. So, so be aware of that. If you have those types of solicitors coming around, they don't have a permit, you contact us. We go out and make contact with them. We usually find them. We run them out. They don't even live in the area. A lot of them are book salesmen, right, or magazine salesmen. And they're back from, you know, Maryland, Massachusetts, but they're out here, and a lot of them aren't... Uh, the most upstanding citizen. So yeah, please call us. Okay. Yes. But also do know that if they're a nonprofit organization, if they belong to, if they're a political organization, they do not need permits. So. I didn't know we, that. We have issue, we, we contacted the city and this is what we were told. Okay. So if they're a nonprofit organization, I believe they are they don't need um, the permit. Right. What I explain to people is that there's, uh, if they're for profit, like they're a business or something, they're soliciting their business, they need to get a permit. If it's non-profit, like fundraising, Girl Scout selling cookies, whatever, they don't need a permit. But put all that aside, go with your gut feeling. It doesn't matter. If someone's in your neighborhood that makes you feel uncomfortable, or it's after six o'clock, or something's just not right, call 911. Don't even worry about whether it's profit, for profit, they have a permit or not. Just call 911 if it's something that's not making you feel right. And if it is for profit, they know if they go the proper route and they come through the city to get the permit, it's only good till six o'clock at night. And you guys all know they come after six because that's when you're home, okay? So that's already one violation. The other thing is, is they know when they get the permit that they have to show it and it has to be on their person anytime it's asked for. So they can't say, oh, it's in the van or I got dropped off. So again, it's just anything that makes you feel like something's not right, just call 911. I hope that addresses There's that. There's nothing wrong with calling 911. We're gonna come out there. It's gonna be a two unit response because that's how we do it. That's our policy within the sheriff's office. If you have any doubt, I'd rather have you err on the side of caution because we go over, th go over this all the time in neighborhood watch meetings. It's, it's um, you that help us catch these people because when they see the patrol car coming down the street, they don't do anything. It's the neighbors that are nosy that see the suspicious vehicle with the guy sitting in it or suspicious persons knocking on doors or going through win windows that call 911. We hit the area and that's how we catch them. Yes, is it recommended? A few years back we were told to put um, on our iPhone ICE, I-C-E, in case of emergency and put our loved one, whoever we want contacted in case, you know, you know we faint on the street or something and they know who to contact. Do you still recommend that to put that that's on the iPhone? That's the first time I've ever heard of it, but yeah, that's probably a good idea. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, we're here talking about zones and neighborhoods, and some time ago, I stumbled upon a crime map for Cupertino. A uh, crime is a map? A crime map you know, showing where crimes occurred. Is that something that you folks do, or is that a, a company that gets reports from somewhere else? There's, do you know about there's that? There's a website, actually, called crimereports.com crimereports.com, go on it, it's constantly updated, and if you go to it, you type in your address, your city, you'll see all the crime that's occurring in your neighborhood. And it'll say residential burglary, um, Megan's Law, 
Those are the real ones that, you know, that really pique people's interest because they want to know who's living in their neighborhood. And if it's Megan's Law type of thing, it'll actually have a photo in there of the person. So um, go to that site and you'll find out what's occurring in your neighborhood. Uh, yes. I have a question. That, um, um, right now, it's pretty easy to get somebody's uh, personal um, information like uh, name, address, uh, social security number, or something, um, especially that there was a lot of uh, coming uh, from the computer. And um, can you give me some idea that what happened if this, hap if this kind of thing, that who is uh, in charge of this? Is that uh, local police or is a uh, federal um, FBI or is this On who to report it to, sir? No, it's not happened to me yet. Uh, actually, that my kids actually uh, get this kind of thing before. Um, they you report even it get to the police. You, you call 911 or uh -huh. the 299 2311 because it's not an emergency. And then we'll come out there and talk to you about what happened. Even if it's a computer? Yes. We have a computer task force that I was part of a few years back. Really great agency, and they, they, they do great things. Okay. <laughs> they do million dollar uh, scams. It's, so it's basically, that, uh, it, is somebody going to actually take some action? That's a, it's, yes. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And don't give over, give, uh, like if some solicitor calls on the phone and says you won the lottery or something like that, and you know. <laughs> If you give us your personal information, you know, you'll get $200,000. Don't do that. Don't fall for that scam. <laughs> or if uh, somebody's been arrested, a distant relative's been arrested, and they want you to wire them $10,000, and they'll give you 5000 back, that kind of thing, don't do it. I, I have a... Um, Sorry. I have an incident to um, tell you that it happened to me twice. Um, somebody comes at the door in the daytime and they knock on the door really hard and they ring the bell too. And I am alone at home sometimes. I went to the door and I said, who is it? And the person doesn't say anything. And they stand at the door for a long time. And then I don't open the door because I'm scared, you know, because they, they knock on the door really, really hard that it's sh the whole house shakes. So it has happened to me well, twice. A lot of people will do that, right? Because we've all heard of the scams where they'll knock on the door to see if anybody's home. If nobody's home, they go around to the back. If they don't see an alarm system or a surveillance camera, they may even force the door open. If they don't hear an alarm go off, they go inside and, and have their way. So in your instance, call 911 and we'll come out there. Don't, okay. you know, if you're nervous about anything, answering the yeah. door and somebody's banging on your door and you don't know who it is. Right. I mean, maybe it's a friend or a neighbor or something trying to. No, I can see from okay, the then you window call us who it and... is. It's some guy standing with a book and maybe pretending or I don't know, genuine guy. I have no idea. But I am scared to open the door because they don't say anything. They just stand there. You can always there. get a no soliciting permit. Or not a permit, but a uh, sign, put it out on your door. Maybe mm -hmm. that'll deter some of the solicitors. Mm -hmm. But if okay. you're nervous about something, call us. That's what we get paid for. It doesn't cost you a dime. Okay, thanks. Um, I have a, a question as far as uh, bullying goes. It seems to be on the rise. And if it's something that is not family-oriented or school-oriented, is that something the Sheriff's Department handles? Or is that a good, good place to start? <clears throat> It's happening in school? No, let's say it's something that's not happening in school where there's, oh. you can't, you know, there's nobody to talk to at school, but it's happening elsewhere. If there's a crime that occurred, then you can go ahead and call us, certainly. We can come out there. It doesn't hurt for you to call us and we go out there and investigate it because every circumstance is different. If the bullying turns into something else, maybe a hate crime or something like that, I mean, they're going to ask specific questions on the incident. They determine a crime is occurring, they'll take a report on it. If you want something done, they'll take a report on it. Well, by the time that happens, it's too late. I, I'm let's say if a person is being bullied, a teenager, and before it gets any further, is that something that should be reported to the Sheriff's Department and can be resolved, or where do you go? What do you do? I Where would, do you go I would give us a call, and we can come out there and see who's bullying, who's doing the bullying. I mean, you're not giving me a whole lot of specific, 
specifics. Is it a certain group? Do they know who the people are? I mean, that's all something a deputy is going to come out there and gather the information and, and try to make contact with those people. Right? Did I answer that? Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's really a fuzzy question with with no really solid resolution. I need more facts, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, if you're going to call us out there, the deputy is going to investigate and and determine if there's a crime or not. Okay. Thank you. I have a comment, a request to the city that perhaps regarding door-to-door uh, -door salesmen. Uh, I always ask the people for their, their permit, their, for their peddler's permit, including the strawberry salespeople that stand on the corners. And uh, personally, I, I think you know, our farmer's market is better suited than, than having these people <clears throat> come in. However, uh, when I ask for the uh, peddler's permit, Sometimes you pull out something that looks like it must have been halfway across the country and back and worn out and something, but it says Cupertino. I'd like to make a request that perhaps the city could at least, to us block leaders, put a picture or an image of that, what that should look like. So we ask them for it, we know that something is legitimate. Thank you. I can address that. As far as the permits that they do issue, they look like little ID cards. And I actually have um, one that I can um, give Laura to post maybe on the website or whatever. It's an ID card. It has their picture on it. It'll have the city manager's signature on it. It'll have a date that it expires. It'll have the hours that they can sell between. And it's going to be laminated so it cannot be crunched up, faded, or altered in any way. And, um, but again, it goes back to if you have any feeling that something's not right or they don't belong there or it's a traffic hazard, uh, anything like that, call 911 and have a deputy come out there and talk to them and see what's going on. That, that, it goes back to that. But yes, um, the, the permit, it's just a, it's like a business card that's like a white, uh, off-white color, manila colored papered, and it has their, the city logo and stuff on it. Yeah, anyone can print and laminate anything. So again, go about that feeling if something doesn't seem right, call 911. Yeah, uh, there is a girl stay with us, uh, renting a room from us. And over the summer, she said she goes to school at uh, De Anza College. She said five of her classmates, she included, uh, was in the identity threat from Citibank, Citicorp. So they all lost some money. and. Uh, but they are, I told her that she should report to the police, but she said, oh, maybe City Corp already did. I mean, in normal situation, what should I advise her to do? She can always call us. She should. And we'll come out there and make contact with her. Okay. Is it, still, is it too late because it's happened during the summer? Over the uh, summer? Can we still Did she already it? cancel the card? She already then did. Then it's probably already handled. Okay. So usually we should report, I mean, in order for you to catch the criminal, we, we don't always right catch away. them. I got to tell you, they're slick because they have 15 different names. <laughs> not, <laughs> to not track always. all. I, uh -huh. Yeah, it's I it's very difficult to catch them, but uh, so usually they not... slip up a time or two or go into a, a store where there's surveillance cameras, and we get a good face of them. Then we make it what we call a, a track flyer for a fraud alert. Send it out to all the agencies because it's not their first rodeo. Somebody's going to know who that person is. And a lot of times, that's how we catch our, our crook. Okay. Um, I had a small incident to report. Um, I'm a block leader, and my uh, block is very close to Monte Vista High School. Um, day before yesterday, uh, at about 11 o'clock, my neighbor's garage door was open, no cars in their driveway inside the garage. So that sounded very suspicious. And I was on my way somewhere. I couldn't stop and call the police. But it so happened I saw code enforcement officer driving by. So I immediately flagged him and I said, you know, this house is empty. Um, the, I know the neighbors have gone to work, no cars in the garage. Please, can you go look? And um, he said, okay. And uh, then I heard back that a couple of officers went there and they were looking around. And it so happened that the neighbor's son, who was in high school, had come back home. Whoops. And <laughs> that was embarrassing, but it was better to be safe than sorry. 
<laughs> no, you're absolutely right. And, and the son, if we didn't know who he was, was you know, probably treated appropriately, handcuffed. And, and t- <laughs> until we, I'm telling you, that's what's going to happen because, you know, if it's a burglary, burglars, uh, they carry weapons. So we don't know who lives there. If somebody's calling and, and they're saying everybody's at work, nobody should be there, and somebody's inside and it's their, you know, son home from college, you know, he's probably going to get proned out, handcuffed until we can t- determine otherwise. So, I mean, that's, that's the way it works. <laughs> I have a question on a telephone scam. We recently got a call saying that, uh, you know, you have committed a major crime. It'll tell our names clearly and uh, proper pronunciation and everything. And then it'll say you have committed a crime and you call so-and-so officer in the sheriff's department, it'll give us a number which is out of state. And then it'll say that if you call and pay the fee, then um, you won't be arrested. Otherwise, tomorrow morning you'll be coming and uh, the sheriff's department will come and arrest you. So this has happened to our friends two or three Click. times. So what do we do when we, I mean, we don't, Click. it's a message actually. So we don't even listen. So do we report it to you with the number that There's they give you? There's too many, we'll, we'll never be able to track it down. I just hang up on them. Oh, okay. Tell my kids to hang up on them, my wife to hang up on them. <laughs> All right. Is there anyone else? Um, do you think that maybe um, you can, if you guys want to talk about anything current crimes that are happening in the city? Any crime waves that you see? Nothing. Like it, well, I went through the data, and you know, it's commercial burglary, residential burglary, residential burglary, grand theft, vehicle burglary. So, I mean, that's what's going on over here for the most part is is just burglaries. So. Um, the, a, a good way to deter residential burglaries is to get an alarm system. If you don't have money to buy an alarm system, there's alarm signs you can post out front. There's, you know, if you have a dog, you want a dog, get a little yelper dog that barks at everything. That's your best alarm there. Secure your windows. It's getting a little bit cooler now, but a lot of people don't secure their bedroom windows, and we do have hot prowls. Uh, we do have people with alarm systems. Um, this one, I hope this person's not here, but um, <laughs> they have an alarm system that goes to their, their phone, their iPhone, and it's got surveillance, so they're, they get the alert on their phone, and they're looking at it and going, hey, who is this guy in our house? <laughs> Better call my brother. Hey, can you come over here? I want you to see something. So in the meantime... This burglary is occurring in their house, and by the time they, they actually got the whole family together because they were somewhere else and drove to their house to check on the house first. So if you have a system like that, please call us. Don't, I don't care. It could be somebody back home from college or something, but if you don't recognize a person and that person's in your house, call us because that's the only way we're going to catch them because by the time we get there, they're going to be gone. So... Um, I'm, I'm a firm believer in alarms because if there's a window, if your alarm system's on and there's a window pried open or a door pried open, the alarm's going to go off. That means it's going to the alarm company. That means neighbors are looking outside and, and the crook's going to be gone. They're never going to make it into your house. If they break a door, break a window, and they don't hear anything, they go into your house. So simple deterrent for residential burglaries is to uh, get an alarm system. Yes. Um, it's hard to say because there's so many different ways they can enter through an open window if it's if it's unsecured, unsecured doors, uh, the little side uh, doors to the garage. They kick those in. If they alarm, if they don't hear anything go off or a dog bark, they go in. A lot of times, and, and I think we went over this. This loud banging on a door. They'll they'll knock on the door. Nobody's home. They'll go around the back and make entry. Or They'll knock on the door of somebody's home. They have their partner go around the back, make entry through an open door, and they'll ransack your house And while this person's trying to sell an alarm system or something. And uh, I mean, there's, thieves are pretty darn creative. They're pretty creative, so um, to answer that question, there's so many different ways to get into a house. You know, I'm, I'm going to stop right here for a minute. We, we have so many rich questions, and um, 
we'd like for the program to move in. I know you can, and they can, they can too. But uh, I'm told Stephanie is volunteering your time for after our session, if you have any, <laughs> <laughs> to hang around. You know, you only have 100 people to ask you questions. So if, <laughs> do you have any other, um, any other trends that you'd like to share with us before Stephanie comes on and wraps it up? I don't think so, but I really want to thank you for being a great neighborhood and, and putting together this uh, awesome dinner and great get together because it's really exchanging stories and, and having us come out here and tell you how to prevent things, the hottest trends and what's really going on in your neighborhood. Sheriff's Office does a great job out here, I think. Uh, I'm proud to serve you guys. And if you have any questions, you know, ask Stephanie, she'll tell you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>